Hello everyone! <laughs> Mabuhay! This is MJ Sensei and welcome to MJ Planet. In this lecture, we'll be tackling about phagocytosis. And before we proceed to the main discussion, four pointers that I would just like to impart to you or mention. First, phagocytosis is a cellular component of your second line of defense under innate, natural, or non-specific immunity. Second, phagocytosis was observed firsthand by Eli Mechnikov or Ilya Mechnikov in other references because of his observation of um, cells in a transparent starfish or starfish larvae that when he has introduced a small thorn from a tangerine, um, he has observed that some cells or several cells were actually surrounding the, the small thorn and eventually thorn and eventually engulfing the foreign particle. And third, phagocytosis was actually coined or was actually suggested by a good friend of him, Carl Kloss, and it came from the big word phagin, which means to eat or devour, and kutos, which means hair parasites. What? <laughs> trying hard to <laughs> no i mean hollow vessels in reference to the cells that eat another cells and lastly bear in mind that phagocytosis is not only limited to wbc's because there are also other cells i mean when we say phagocytosis kasi the first thing that comes into our mind we have wbc's but bear in mind that phagocytosis is not only limited among wbc's because there are also other cells that are capable for such function so in phagocytosis, you have to remember my mnemonic because there are also other mnemonics. So whatever mnemonic or abbreviation that you are comfortable, but I would just like to share you that my mnemonic in phagocytosis is 8. A-I-D. 8. A for attachment or adhesion. I for ingestion. Yeah. Ingestion or engulfment. And letter D for digestion or killing. Those are the basic steps in phagocytosis. Now, I would like to mention di diapedesis and chemotaxis. You don't, you should not be confused between diapedesis and chemotaxis because when you say chemotaxis, it's just the attraction. Because of this attraction, there is diapedesis or the movement of the WBCs um, along the subendothelial wall in order for them to to you know get out of the blood vessel. Um, going towards the site of pathogen or bacteria. So, do not be confused between chemotaxis as well as diapedesis. So, let's first start with letter A, attachment or adhesion. There are two mechanisms wherein the WBCs will facilitate or will, will accomplish adhesion or attachment. It could be direct or it could also be indirect. In the direct interaction, we do have PPR or your primitive pattern recognition receptors. These primitive pattern recognition receptors are already innate receptors of WBCs. These are receptors for um, pumps or pathogen associated molecular patterns. These pumps are present in your microbe, microbial surface, so that upon the entry of microbes, of course, the pumps will be detected by your PPRP, and thus the attachment is actually direct. Compared to your indirect via opsonins, in the process of opsonization, when you say opsonin, it's just the it, this is in order to facilitate phagocytosis. Um, how? By simply coating by coating the, the foreign particle or the microbe in the process also it will also neutralize the surface charge because WBCs are negatively charged particle. The same is also true for those antigens or like microbes negatively charged also so thus um, law of attraction the like will repel like and thus the negative charge must be neutralized via the opsonins. However, the attachment or adhesion will be indirect. Why? Because the surface has already been coated prior the attachment of your WBCs. Examples of opsonins are your complement proteins like C3B. Remember, this is the best complement protein that is an opsonin. We also have C4B as well as C5B. 
Then we also have immunoglobulins like IgG1 and IgG3, even IgG2 as well as IgG4. Remember this, IgG3 is the best subclass of IgG um, oxidant. Then we also have IgA. And lastly, your C-reactive proteins. Moving on to your after letter A is your letter I, ingestion or engulfment. After ingestion or engulfment, what I would just like you to remember here is the formation of phagosomes, right? And then we also have here digestion or killing. What happens here, there are two. Just like your adhesion or attachment, we also have here two principles or mechanisms. You have your oxygen-dependent mechanism and the oxygen-independent mechanism. The important one here that you have to remember is this, oxygen-dependent mechanism. The enzyme that you have to remember here is NADPH oxidase. What about NADPH oxidase? It's, it will catalyze right, the formation of oxygen radical or superoxide that is toxic to pathogen. However, this superoxide or oxygen radical is not stable and it's not so, it's not so powerful that is why it's, it must be converted into hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 which will be potentiated again via, via the formation of the combination of formation and eventually combination with hypochlorite ions via the action of MPO or myeloperoxidase which is an enzyme present in the granules of WBCs particularly say for example neutrophils right in the presence of chloride ions these are toxic these radicals are actually toxic to the bacteria why oxygen dependent because we do have the oxygen as an electron donor in order to provide oxygen radical or a superoxide converted into H2O2 combined with hypochlorite ions in order to effectively kill the microbe or bacteria. Another one that you have to remember here is that the disease that is being associated with this one which will also be discussed in your hematology. What is this disease? We have CGD or your chronic granulomatous disease. What about CGD or chronic granulomatous disease? You have to remember the defective NADPH oxidase. That's the key enzyme here. Take note of that. And what, what more thing that I would like you to remember? In CGD, we do have defective killing or digestion. Take note of that. When you say defective killing or di digestion, it doesn't mean that it also has defective phagocytosis. Because when you say defective phagocytosis, all three processes are defective. In this case, in CGD, we only have one step that is, that is defective, which is digestion or killing. So, when being asked in the defective killing or digestion, we do have CGD. Now, when you say defective phagocytosis, other disease entity, you have to exclude CGD. You have to take note of a disease that is not that is defective in the three steps: attachment or adhesion, ingestion, digestion, or killing, which will be discussed by your hematology lecture. Then we also have here oxygen independent mechanism. From the term itself, it doesn't utilize or it's independent um, of oxygen. What are this? We have defensins, which are natural or antibiotic-like peptides made by phagocytes, especially polymorphonuclears. And yeah, enzymatic digestion, like your lysozymes, as well as lactoferrin. So you have here, it seems like this illustration is complex, but it's actually pretty, pretty easy. So you have here a leukocyte. Leukocytes have their glycoproteins along the surface, right? You have here Sialy Lewis X modified glycoprotein and integrin. So you can see here the ruling, meaning the, the, the leukocytes will roll along the sides, right? So first, margination. When you say margination, they will just, the, the WBCs or the phagocytes will just lie along the sides. So they will concentrate along the sides or the margin of your blood vessel so from the center they will marginate or they will go to the margins of the blood vessel and then after that they will roll they will roll here until such time that they will encounter they will encounter an integrin ligand say here icam as well as proteoglycan and selectins and then when they encounter this the adhesion will be stable and then after that here comes diapedesis meaning they will slip through the subendothelial wall or lining of your blood vessel going to the chemokines attracting because they are being attracted 
right via diapedesis they will be attracted going to the microbe and then eventually phagocytosing right and eventually killing or digesting this microorganism they also provide here another illustration by Turgeon. So we have here chemotaxis, attraction, and adherence, followed by engulfment, take note, formation of phagosomes or pseudopodia. Then you also have digestion or destruction. Then you also have here fusion and phagosome. Um, oh, baliktad, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, I will engulfment. You have to take note here. Pagos. Pagos ang sinasabi ko, pero yung tinuturo, pinabasa ko dito, digestion. <laughs> so, your phagosome, or meaning the combination of your uh, pseudopod plus your microbe. Then, upon the combination of your lysosome plus your microbe, we have phagolysosome. This one, here, phagolysosome. And then, after that, digestion and destruction which could be via two oxygen dependent and oxygen independent mechanism now that's a wrap that's the end of my lecture maray maraming salamat sa pagsama and i hope na sana nandun pa rin kayo sa mga susunod na kabanata ng ating pagtuturo at hanggang sa muli ating pagkikita paalam